Okay, what's the deal, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Daily Deposits. I'm here this morning. I got my brothers Duke and Gaines with me. We're working on a tri set right now. We're actually finishing the first half of this workout, but we got one last set. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we're doing. We're working on some chaos barbell reverse lunges, adding an additional foam pad on our feet for more balance stability. On top of that, we're doing it barefoot. So it's really hard. It's extremely tough having to find those little stabilizing muscles inside the foot to keep your balance as well as activating the glute. Then we got some incline. Uh, chest press. I'm finishing up right now. I want you guys to get a look at this set and exactly how tough it is and how much focus it requires. As I said, creating some chaos by having these resistance bands hold these kettlebells. All right, so there's constant motion every time the bar is moving. Enormous amount of focus here. Okay, here we go. Woo! Four more reps, oh. Three reps, oh. Ooh, one rep, oh. Ah. Ah. I can't finish like that. There it is. There it is. Ooh. Only doing six and six. Nice, slow, and under control. That's just your anchor. Stay with me now. Stay with me. Regular people can't do this. <laughs> We're asking shit. Final rep, oh. Load it. Come on, stay on that front foot. Bam. Nice. That right there took a lot out of me, fam. My body. Yeah. That's it, dude. Ah, come on, dude. Yeah, dude. My body. Ah. Hey, see, one thing about being athletic is you got to train explosive, but it's all about body control. So we're working so much mm. stability, core, glutes, all the smaller muscles in the feet, the ankles, the knees, all the way up to the hip. All that shaking is stabilizing. Everything is on fire right now. So as an athlete, you got to be able to control your body. Everybody says it's going to be pretty, though. Nah. Nah, hell no. Nah. Effective, though. Now we athletes, so we train for sport mm. around here. Right? Ah. You know, train for sport. We struggle now, so it look easy in the game. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? They don't see this part. Ah. B-roll, let me show him what we want. <laughs> He's gotta get a hand on him. Gotta get a hand on him, boy. So that's bump and run, fam. Ain't no run without the buck. Woo! Three reps. Buck 65, blazing. You want to touch it? Woo! Out of there. Chase. <laughs> hey, yo, people are forgetting, yo. Hey, football player be strong. On the football field, you want 85, you like. You still strong, though. Oh, pound right. for pound. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Talk about that little block that come in. That need that. Whew. All righty. <laughs> so these boys cooking up something else right now. One thing for sure I know we're about to throw into the next cluster is some plyos. About to get real athletic. We're gonna load some jumps first, then we're gonna explode onto the plyo boxes. Exactly what I mean when I say train for sport. We're trained to be athletic, be explosive, learn how to decelerate, load, and change direction. So this will be the fun part of the workout. I don't exactly know what we're doing. Ooh. Eight? Yeah, try to get the toes above the bar. Yeah. <laughs> like a cat! We're gonna do some kettlebell speed squats, okay? Three reps. All right, and then get explosive on the jump over the bench and then onto the box. And then softly, like a cat, nice and athletic. See how Spider Man land? You barely hear his ass. It's gonna be like that. This ain't no motherfucking baby dog. Ooh. Oh, it's tough right there. It's really tough to transition from squats to the first jump. We got some resisted kettlebell swings, forcing the glutes to work a lot harder at the top, fighting that resistance with the band. Yo, meeting that resistance at the top with the band, making it real spicy for the glutes at the top. You know? Looking for a way to add more difficulty to your ordinary swing. You're stuck at the home, you don't have as much weight as you're uh, accustomed to having at the gym. Add some resistance to it, see how it spices that up. I just talked about 
how difficult it is to use your arms coming from the squat to the first jump. Now, for those that don't know, when you're jumping, your arms are like your wings, fam. A lot of people don't use their arms to get up. You wanna lift, you gotta bring your arms with you. And that's why it's so hard to get over this bench because your hands are already occupied with the kettlebell to start. So it's up to you to navigate through, but we athletes, so we're gonna do it. So we already loaded here, nice flat back, strong in the arms. Yeah, yup. Yep. So we got dips, slow, oh, leg lift. Faster. Yep. You can hear it, huh? Yep. Okay. In your initial position. Yo, those dips after those alternating eccentric uh, inclined chest press that we did in the first cluster see. got my chest fried fam so i'm being stimulated in this session right now but if you lock in there Coffee you want to keep everything all here no okay okay, okay. Pull. uh squeeze the shoulder blades together you know what makes you a great athlete being coachable being coachable fam let's go Being coachable. Being coachable. Best athletes in the world, not the most talented, not the most skilled, not the fastest, not the strongest, most coachable. People that's afraid to be coachable never get better. The world cruel, man. If you're not ready to handle that coaching, that criticism, you're going to die. And that's a perspective we get as athletes, because you're forced to respect that man. At a certain point, he control your future. If you're a high school athlete trying to get a scholarship and your coach throw salt on your name, you're not getting recruited. They can come to your coach first before they come to you. And he got to give to say so. He's yep. a good guy. Yep. He's coachable. He's yep. a great player. That's going to translate to the real world. You a good businessman. You yep. a good man. You a good father. You a good husband. Talk about it, man. Come on, dog. Talk about it. Sports translates to life. That's what the real athletes do. And that's why I think so many parents encourage their kids to play sports, right? Some, not, most of them, actually never going to pursue a professional career. But it's the intangible things that you take away from the sport, right? Being disciplined, learning how to accept public criticism, dedication, hard work, all of those things that make you a great person in any aspect of your life, business, personal relationships. It's like John was speaking on. <sighs> Huh. That leg raise is going to force you to fully extend at the top, squeezing the triceps, shifting away strong core. Because if you're not under control, these things will wobble on you. Yeah, you might oh. bust your ass. Practice ain't supposed to be pretty. Hell no. Nah. That's for game time, baby. Huh. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. There it is. That's the travel. Yeah. Because if you still go this one. way, it's, yep. it's, it's supposed easy. to be this way, this yeah. way. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Good note. I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. Difference. Gotta be coachable, fam. Uh, Woo. If you go back and review the tape right there, you see I'm following through with my hips, but not overextending at the top. Just squeezing the glutes at the top, not pushing the pelvis through. Yeah. Power is generated from the hips. Your arms are only an extension, so you don't even need to think about swinging it high. It's just following through with the hips, and the arms follow with the hips. With the hips, shit. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Lazy. That happened to me too. Last one. I, I tipped the box over. Oh, this is a great day. I can hit my calories on the couch now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Duke. Yeah. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Nice. Y'all can do something once. Talk about that consistency, man. What face mask you have? Two bar. The running back. Yeah. Bar. Two bar. <laughs> Gotta have a two bar. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> 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 yeah. Thirty. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's love right there. That's when you be like, hey, don't worry, I ain't in the shop. But I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one more. Come on. There it is. Ah. Yeah. yeah. And that's when being cerebral can affect an athlete. You start thinking too much instead of like just playing. We all go through that. You're just trying to learn something, trying to correct a mistake, right? Fix something that you didn't like. Sometimes it happens. You get focused thinking about that mistake instead of actually finish through an entire exercise or movement or whatever it is. But 
So you see, athletes overcome, fam. Adversity, you knock it down, go through it, around it, over it, whatever it takes. <laughs> and it's also a testament to a good coach. I got two great coaches right here. So to see something, you've done it before. We've wrecked this. You've done it. You made a mistake, that's fine. I'm going to show you what you did wrong. Now apply it and don't overthink it. Yeah. That's a good thing about having eyes on it. And being able to accept it and be wrong. I want to be better. I want to just yeah. be doing bad reps all day because it look good on film. Tell me if I'm doing it wrong. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Self-accountability along with surrounding yourself with people that's going to hold you accountable. That's how you get better. Right. I think that's one thing that we've all missed during the quarantine. That's the type of information, feedback, criticism you get when you're around your homies or your friends, colleagues, confidants, whatever, at the gym. You know, since we've been quarantined, Obviously, just like everybody else around the country, it's been tough. A lot of people have been working out from home. We all kind of been just having force to get it in on ourselves. You know, that's why we cherish these moments when we get to get together because we know we're going to get better. You know, had any one of us been going through this exercise or workout by ourselves, there's things that we can't see in ourselves, yeah. you know? It's hard to see the picture when you're in it. You know, so that's why it's really important to have this and it's one of the reasons why I appreciate my friends pulling up. Something that I, I dearly miss. I don't know about them, but I, I guess I'm speaking more so for myself right now. But that's something I, I really miss is going to the gym, being around the homies because that's how you really get better. You know, we all really high level athletes. We spent a lot of our lives competing at the highest level, putting our bodies through different types of training, right? So, but here we are, we still don't know it all. Accepting the fact that you don't know it all and there's some things you're not good at, it's okay to be coached, right? And part of that, a lot of us have egos and we think like, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this long enough. I think that if we let our egos take over our logic, then we'll never progress. Because one thing that we don't know, someone else knows. A part of getting better and progressing is understanding that and being open to like the criticism. You know what I'm saying? And the advice. And that's just not, we're talking athlete stuff, we're talking sports and fitness. But this life. stuff, this stuff applies to everything. You don't have to be an athlete to really grab this information and get a hold of what we're talking about, man. If you are open to criticism, right? Especially if it's coming from a place of love. Because we all know there's a difference between criticism for the sake of trying to improve your situation or make you better, right? And we just, as long as we have that discernment, man, we're going to be fine. The greatest thing you can do is collaborate with other trainers. It's things that you're not gonna learn in that book. It's things that you're, you're not gonna do on your own. You know, it's different when you got people around you, in person, live feedback, collaboration over competition all day, man. That's Ooh. something that I've, I've really harped on coming to LA. In a place where there's so much competition, that's how you separate yourself and you learn as much from the people around you and people that are in places that you wanna be. You know, it don't matter about following, it don't matter about none of that. Somebody got 2,000 followers and can be the best trainer in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't look for just that. Surround yourself with people that are striving to get better because there's something that they're doing that you're not. And you start collaborating and you're going to get that. Collaboration over competition. And I don't know where he got that from, but I picked that up in, from a book called Three Magic Words. I'm in the process of cooking up another episode of, of my top five books. And I'm thinking that's going to be in there. So if you guys are really interested in hearing more about you know the books that we read, that keep our mind frame right, drop them in the comments below. And I'll get that going ASAP because I got a couple other videos in the, in the pipeline, but I'll be comfortable and more than happy to push that one forward. So with that said, man, thank you guys for joining us in today's episode. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Uh, bang that like button, comment which exercise you would like to do with your homies next time y'all link up. Subscribe, and on that note, I'm out.